This is what we want to do. We want to show how damaging pornography is to your spirit, to your soul, to your body. We want to show you how to get free, and we want to show you how to stay free. Welcome to Porn Free, and can I say right up front, I am so proud of you for coming to this course because that speaks of your hunger for God, your desire for a healthy lifestyle, and your humility. And so I can't applaud you enough, and I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Now, let me just say this right up front. I want you to understand this, and I want this to just reverberate all throughout this entire course, and that is this, that God intimately and deeply loves you. He cares for you deeply. I want you to understand something else. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you so very much, so much so that before you ever even heard his name, he died so that you could be free. That's amazing when you think about it. The Holy Spirit and his presence is here, and I believe it is in your office, your home, wherever you're watching me right now. His presence is here, and you can sense, I can already tell, you can sense his presence, and his presence is just overwhelming you with love. So, what does it mean that we love you, that God loves you? Well, let me tell you this. When you love somebody, you will tell them the truth. You will do it kindly, you will do it patiently, you will not do it as if I know more than you, you will tell them the truth. In our society today, love has been redefined. And it's basically this, if I love you, that means I affirm you. Why would I wanna affirm you in a state that is wreaking havoc in your life? That's wrong. I want what God wants for you. Think about it, God is our creator, he's our maker. He was the one that manufactured us. I'm trying to get here in uh, relevant terms. You know, as a father of four sons, when Christmas came around, there was often times that I gave them gifts that needed to be assembled. And that assembly sometimes took up to two hours because it was very intricate. And here's the deal. I remember thinking, ah, you know, I'm a typical guy. I don't need directions. I don't need instructions. I spend two hours putting this thing together. And then when the whole thing's put together, there's still 10 pieces on the floor. And then I turn it on and it doesn't work. And then, okay, Mr. Thickheaded goes back to the manufacturer's manual, the guy who invented this thing and I see all the places that I messed up. Well, here's the deal, God's our maker, and so God knows what makes us, he knows what makes us tick, and he knows what undoes us. So you always want to hear the truth because your maker only speaks the truth that will make you whole. So. He loves you, but he loves you enough to speak the truth to you because he doesn't want you to stay in the current state that you are if you are in a bondage situation that's unmaking you. He wants to set you free. So that keep that in mind the entire time we're going through this course because it is so important that we don't lose sight of that. There is a weapon, and let me introduce this porn freak course by saying there is a weapon that the enemy of our souls is using very effectively on the majority of us in the church. Yeah, you heard what I said, the majority of us. It's damaging our lives, it's damaging those who are close to us, and it's called pornography. And from this point forward, I will refer to it simply as porn. What are some of the statistics from the, the most recent researches that have been done, it's staggering when you hear this. And I want you to listen really carefully, okay? Number one, the average age that a young man or woman that is exposed to porn is age 11, okay? Now, that was me, so I hit it right on the nose on that one. 94% of all people say that they have seen pornography by the time they're 14 years old. This one's really sobering, 68%. So let me just make this realistic. Seven out of 10, 68% of the men who attend church watch pornography on a regular basis. I didn't make that up. That is the most recent survey. Again, seven out of every 10 men that are sitting in a church on Sunday watch pornography on a regular basis. Over 50 and this one's really hard to say, but it's, it's true, it's, it's a true stat, over 50% of pastors view pornography on a regular basis. 
Single men, 67% of men age 25 and under, and 33% of women age 25 and under watch porn at least once a month. Married, 55% of married men and 25% of married women say they watch porn at least once a month. I hope this is horrifying you because it did with me and it put a fire in me for this course. 87% of Christian women admit to having watched pornography. I mean, this is mind blowing. 57% of the pastors say pornography addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation, yet only 7% of the churches have a program to help those struggling with it. Could it be that the pastor's also struggling with it also? Porn is a major factor in 56% of the divorces. So in this course, we, this is what we wanna do. We wanna show how damaging pornography is to your spirit, to your soul, to your body. We wanna show you how to get free, and we wanna show you how to stay free. Now, this is not academic to me because I am a man that was eaten up with lust. I was bound to pornography. A friend of mine showed it to me when I was, I think, 12 years old. It was either 11 or 12, but I'm almost sure it was 12. I got so eaten up with lust that by the time I got to high school, I was literally undressing girls in my high school classes in my mind and having the wildest sexual fantasies. By the time I got to college and I entered a fraternity, played varsity tennis at Purdue, I was completely consumed by lust so that when I got married to Lisa at the age of 23, I thought it would go away. I thought marrying who I consider to be the most beautiful girl that walks the planet, and in my eyes, she was a supermodel. I thought this is all gonna go away. It didn't, it actually got worse. But I have great news, and that is this. I was completely and totally set free on May 6, 1985, and I am still free today. So I have a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion for every one of you guys or ladies that are watching this right now that you've come to this course to be set free. Not only are you looking at a man who believes you will be set free, but you're looking at a man who has actually walked through it and I don't want you to struggle the way I struggled. I am believing you watching this course will cut down this struggle greatly because you're getting the revelation knowledge that I had to seek God and seek God for. You're getting it all in one course. So it's really important that you understand that in no way, shape, or form do I wanna bring any shame, guilt, or condemnation on you. So I wanna eliminate that right now. I don't want the enemy whispering in your ear saying this guy is looking down on you. No, I am looking at you with a lot of love and compassion right now and believing with you for your complete total freedom. Now, with that said, there's something really important I need to say, and that is this. Pornography is a sin. Okay, now I really need to emphasize this because if you see it as, well, 70% of the guys in church are doing it, so I'm just you know in with the crowd. Let me remind you, Jesus says that are, there are few that find the way of life. So if you compare yourself with the majority, you might be comparing yourself with the wrong crowd if you read Matthew 7 carefully. Pornography, without a doubt, is a sin. Jesus made this statement in Matthew 5, verses 27 and 28. You have heard the commandment that says you must not commit adultery. That is one of the Ten Commandments. It is number seven to be exact. But I say anyone who even looks at a woman with lust, with intense desire to have sexual relationships with her, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That is a heavy statement. So it's important. God loves you, but now listen to me. He hates sin. So God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin that undoes the sinner. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So let me make this really clear. God loves you, but he hates anything that undoes you. He hates anything that damages you. He hates anything that degrades you. He hates anything that enslaves you. He wants you free. So what are the, some, of the, some of the damaging effects of pornography? Number one, it grieves the heart of God. And if you love God, you don't want to grieve his heart. Number two, it hardens our heart. Brethren... This is Hebrews 12 and 13. This is not an Old Testament scripture. Brethren, so you can see right there, he's talking to Christians. Exhort one another daily while it is called today. So that means every day. Lest any of you, so he's speaking to Christian men and women. Lest any of you be hardened, hardened 
through the deceitfulness of sin. So sin will harden your heart. Sin separates us from having intimate fellowship with God. God says in Isaiah 59 too, but your iniquities, your sins, have separated you from your God. It doesn't say it separates him from you. It separates you from him. See, you distance yourself. You ever have a friend and you did something that you knew was wrong? And then the next time you saw him, it was a little hard to really get down to heart level with that friend because you knew you just lied about him? Okay, this is what happens. It separates you from God. You don't have the confidence to go into his presence because you're continually sinning, disobeying him. So it's serious. It steals our strength. David made this statement in Psalm 31.10. He said, sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. So it's a repetitive cycle. Your strength gets drained. You don't have the strength to stand against the sin. So you keep going because your strength keeps getting weaker and weaker. We want you strong. God wants you strong. And I'm so excited about this course because I believe it's going to do it. It degrades people who are made in the image of God. We will talk more about that later. It hurts those in relationship with us. It's a betrayal. <clears throat> and I'll never forget the betrayal that Lisa felt when she found out I was in bondage to pornography. And that was breaking my heart. So I'll talk more about that later. If continued, this sin can sear our conscience. Here's one of the worst things about sin. It leads us into slavery. Jesus makes the statement in John 8, 34. He said, I tell you the truth. So remember, Jesus cares deeply for us, so he's going to tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Paul made the statement in Romans 6, 16. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. And, and we're going to go through all of this in depth in this course. You're going to be so excited when you find out you actually have the power to obey God and you have the power to turn away from this pornography. I am so excited for you. I just, I'm anticipating. I know it's coming, all right? So anyway, <clears throat> it causes, this is this the effects of sin. It causes us to use people and see sex as self-serving rather than sacred. That's so important that you understand that. It creates massive amounts of shame, and I don't think I really need to say that because you've, you've sensed that. It can alter what we find attractive. That's dangerous. It creates unrealistic expectations of what sex will be like if we're single. It robs us of time. It leads us to worse complications. Jesus made a statement. He said, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So here's the great news. You ready for this? The great news is not only did Jesus die to free you from the penalty of sin, he died to free you from the enslavement of sin. Listen to these scriptures. Titus chapter 2 verse 14 says, he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin to cleanse us. So he talks about freeing us and cleansing us in that one statement. In Romans 6, 6 and 7, it says, we are no longer slaves to sin. We were set free from the power of sin. Yes, yeah, sin's got power, but we were set free from the power of it because of what Jesus did for us. What are some of the benefits of becoming free? You're going to love this, all right? Healthy, whole, and thriving relationships. Don't you want that? Every one of us want that. We're going to end generational cycles, broken ways of living. We are going to experience God's design for healthy sexuality. We are going to be more fulfilled in sex in our marriage. And that one I can say is totally true from a man who was in bondage to pornography as a married man and a man now who has been free for over 30 years. Man, I'm telling you, it makes a world of difference in your marriage bed. It, re it reduces and eliminates sexual dysfunction. That's a benefit, okay? It eliminates sexual dysfunction. There are a lot of people, they're having sexual dysfunction right now at young ages. It's scary. It restores a healthy desire for your spouse. And here's another one. You desire the right qualities if you're seeking for a spouse. And the best one of all, here's the benefit you're going to get. You're going to walk in a deeper intimacy with God himself. So what will we cover in this course? <clears throat> this is what we're going to go into. Why you feel stuck the psychology 
and the spiritual roots of addiction. We're gonna go into it. We're gonna talk about the mind. We're gonna learn about epigenetics. There's a lot of things we're gonna be talking about here. We're gonna go to the root, the spiritual aspect of it. We are gonna find out the right motivation to be free and that one is so important. We're gonna break the power of shame. Man, I hate shame. Shame keeps people from getting set free. We're breaking that off of you and we're gonna show you how to stay free from shame, guilt, and condemnation. Uh, we're gonna destroy strongholds, the damaging neurological patterns that have been developed in your mind. We're gonna show you how to destroy those. That's really cool. And we're gonna uh, show you why it's so hard to get free in your own strength. You just can't do it in your own strength. I got news for you, but we've got Jesus. And show you God's way to freedom. How to start filling your life with healthy things and lose your desire for the cheap counterfeits. That one's so important. And we're gonna get practical steps. We're gonna give you practical steps on how to get free and stay free. So let me say this right now, commit. Listen to me, men and women, commit to staying this course. Don't just watch one or two and then go, uh, I don't, I, I don't wanna watch anymore. Please commit to stay through this course. Go all the way to the end because there are different facets that are very, very important to really bring full freedom. I don't wanna see partial freedom for you. I wanna see full freedom in your life. That's what God wants for you. It's so exciting, I mean, I just tell you. I wish you were here in this studio with me because I'd put my arms around you and I'd look you right in the eyes and say, I'm so proud of you, brother. Or I'd hug you and say, I'm so proud of you, sister. So anyway, in the next lesson, before going any further, we're gonna address something. And this is, this is important. We're gonna address the motive to become free. Now, my motive to be free was wrong and it kept me from getting free. So it's really important that we go down to that root core motive of why we wanna be free from pornography. We'll see you in the next lesson.